is coming straight from the heart in path to impart we're giving all sinners a brand new start impact to impart we're sending the message well praise the lord so good to have you again on this program impact to impart and again i want to welcome you to what is promising to be a wonderful afternoon indeed god is and have been good we want to share his goodness towards you with you this afternoon i'm here this afternoon to share with you some good news while we look in the circumstances in the world today as we look in every nation those that are large and those that are small as we look to the nations as we look to kingdoms the word of god indeed did say that everything that can be shaken will be shaken so in this present situation economically financially and globally we see only but turmoil but the word of god to us this afternoon is one in which we are sharing the message of hope you see from since the beginning man have been in this terrible position and i will be sharing with you a couple thoughts from the word of god today from the book of second corinthians chapter 5 and i'll read for you the word and after which i'll just share a couple of my thoughts hear the word of god today in second corinthians chapter 5 reading from verse 11 it says knowing therefore the terror of the lord we persuade men but we are made manifest unto god and i trust also are made manifest in your conscience for we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may be near me, have somewhat to answer them which glory in their parents and not in heart. For whether we besides ourselves or it is to be it is to God, or, or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all then we all are dead and that he died for all that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves but unto him which died for them and rose again hallelujah that's jesus doing the work of god he says wherefore henceforth know ye no man after the flesh ye though we have known christ after the flesh yet now henceforth know we him no more therefore if any man be in christ he's a new creature all things are passed away and behold all things are become new and all things are of god who had reconciled unto himself by Jesus Christ and had given unto us the ministry of reconciliation to wit that God was in Christ reconciling unto the himself and not imputing their trespasses unto them and had committed unto us the word of reconciliation now then we are ambassadors of Christ ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he had made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. This is the word of God, as read from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11 through to 21 and today I want to share with you let's take the Word of God for what it says it says to us today be ye reconciled what is this reconciliation that God is talking about it's talking about you my friend you coming back into a right 
relationship with him. I want to share this afternoon to not just to the unsaved, but also to the believers. Those of you who are believers in Jesus Christ, Christians as we are called, I want to call you to a place. I want to say to you, let's do the work. And you may ask the question, what work are you talking about, Bishop? We're talking about the work that God started since way back in the Garden of Eden the work was started. We're talking about the work that Christ came and on Calvary cross he finished when he made those last words, those closing statement that he said, it is finished. He was talking about the work that was started way back then, the work of reconciliation, the work of bringing men back into relationship with God. Christ finished the work. And guess what? To ensure that the work was done according to what is required, he sent to us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit today have been overseeing the work. He have been ensuring the work goes on and giving us the ability, the strength needed, the gifts needed to be able to do this work. I want to say to you believers, let's do the work. Let's put aside everything else, things that are set to distract us, things that are sent forth to hinder you from doing the work. I want to encourage you to arise and let's do the work. And to the backslider, I want to say to you, why are you so angry? Why are you in this place of despair? Why have you turned your back on God? I want to say to you, be ye reconciled unto God. Come back to God. Come back to your Christ, to your Savior. You know, the Word of God told us about this. Jesus gave us this, this, this story about the prodigal son. The great interesting thing about that is that the father was always looking for the son. Though we would watch and we would have read the story as to what the son would have done. The father didn't know the extremity of what the son did. In this case, our father knows exactly what we have done. And yet still, his arms are open wide, outstretched, waiting for you to come back to him. So I want to speak to you backsliders out there, be it a man, be it a woman. You might have just stumbled across this program, or God have divinely and so set it up that you're watching us here today. I want to say to you, be ye reconciled unto God. Come back into that relationship, because God loves you, cares for you, and he is indeed waiting for you to come back to him. I want to say to you, those of you who have never come to Christ, I want to encourage you and implore you to come to Christ. You see, this is not, life really is about a beginning and an end. What we do in the middle is very crucial. And I, I'm, I'm reminded, I want to say to you, oh, there that I have never come to know Christ, that the word of God shared with us in Genesis about a tree of life. The word said that in Genesis 2 verse 9 that God made all these trees and in the garden he also put the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You have spent your life eating of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. I want to encourage you to come and eat of God's life. In Revelation chapter 2 verse 8, the word of God said that there is a tree that is available, a tree of life, and it's there for you to eat of, but you must come through Christ. You must obey. So I want to encourage you to come to Christ today. I want to encourage you to put aside every excuse because the real issue of life is coming to Christ. Those who have Christ have life. And those who have not Christ will not experience life. You know, you might have made a particular choice and the word of God said, Christ was in the world, not imputing their transgressions unto them. God is come, Christ came, that you would have life. And he's not here to, to just 
point out your faults and try to destroy you. No, he didn't come for that. He came that you would have life. So my friend, today I want to encourage you to come to Christ. Serve him and let him reign in your heart. Would you join with us? I want to pray with you this evening. And I want to just ask you, if you have never given your heart to Christ, to do so. I want to say to you, backslider, you can pray also. Pray a prayer that God would accept you back. And indeed, he loves you and wants you back. And to every believer out there, I want to pray a prayer for you to encourage you on to keep on doing the work. Let's pray today. Just believe God with me. Say, Father, in the name of your Son, I come to you today. I ask you to receive me back to yourself. I ask of you, God, to forgive me for my waywardness for my trespass, for everything that I've done against you. And now, God, I come to you, yielding myself, asking of you, receive me. And so, God, I thank you for receiving me and restoring me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have prayed that prayer with me today, I want to encourage you even further because we are here to help other people escape. You've just heard me share concerning the work of God. God was in the world reconciling men unto himself through Christ. And he had given unto us this word and the ministry of reconciliation. The word said we are ambassadors. And I share with you today as though I have been sent of God and indeed have been, to tell you this good news, God loves you. Indeed, you are tuning to Impact to Impact Ministries. We'll be right back. I'll be coming back after the break, and we're sharing some more closing thoughts with you. We want to encourage you to keep on trusting in God. Let's keep on doing this work. Let's keep on pressing towards the mark. In the midst of all the turmoil of life, there is a hope. And the hope is in Jesus Christ. God love you. I'll be back shortly to give you some closing words. Amen.
You want to use your youthfulness for righteous living. And then when you get old, that is what the advice some people tell you. When you get old, then you can come and, you know, be like them old men in church. <laughs> drop your tides. That is how they see it, eh? You drop your tides. Not partner with God. You drop your tides. You do your kind deeds. If they ask you to clean the churchyard, clean the churchyard and wait till your turn come. Hmm? Is that the way you want to live? Take all of your youthfulness. I'm still talking to that middle group and you waste it away. That's the advice some people give you. Waste it against the fringe of this world. Things that are fleeting away. And then you come after. And then you say, you know, when I was young, you know, it's like, oh, oh great. Um, the last female singer that passed away. Her last song, I look to you. Grew up in church, you know. Travel the world, made her money, have her life. And the last song that she could sing is, I look to you. Hmm? She gone. I don't know whether she's up or down. I hope she really did look to him. Because, and she gets there. And she knows his name. Like many of them who know his name. But they don't obey his word. It's okay to know his name, but it's better to obey his word. Are you hearing me? Amen. I mean, you hear them, you hear them, you hear them all the time. The, the superstars you love. You know, I just want to thank my Lord and Savior. You know, when they're receiving the awards. I just want to say thank you to the man upstairs. Big up to the man upstairs. No, no man upstairs is your judge upstairs. Is your creator upstairs. And one day he'll be calling you into account for what you did with your life. Because he has that power, that right, and that authority to do so. I want you to know, adults, that you too are built for purpose. And you must come into that reality of what your purpose is. You have gone past 25 and still you want to behave like you're 25. You're now 45. You still want to behave like you're 20. You want to run about. You want to jump about. You want to play life. Are you hearing me? There are some things in life that you must understand by now and start settling down. Age supposed to bring reasoning. Age is supposed to bring reasoning. When I was a younger man before I am here today, I was not a minister all of my life. When I was younger, I used to think as a younger man. When I became 19 years, I considered my life. 19. And I said to myself, one day when I got over an overhang, why am I doing this to myself? For? It had nothing to do with church. I, I woke up one morning after a drunk, stupid drunk like before. Wake up the next morning and say, what are you doing this for? This is not making no sense. I went out. I drink. Now look at the place I would vomit. And I'm feeling rotten. And I said to myself, I'm not doing that again. I'm done with that. So since that age to now, no whiskey, no rum, no wine, no strong drink, no soft drink, or anything enter this mouth or this body. And I come to church and I hear Christians fighting to be able to legalize what percentage they must drink. And I, I, I was there doing it and I, I, I reasoned and rationalized to myself with God's help. Wasn't religion, you know. Was a young man considering his ways. Are you hearing me? 
Can I tell you that you too can consider your ways? You too must sit yourself down and rationalize, analyze what you're doing. Huh? You can't court for so much at decades and not get married. Marriage is a part of process of life. It's honorable. That is what the word said. Marriage is honorable. Don't let the world with their nonsense degrade it, downgrade this institution to nothingness. Because that's what they want to do. Because they are superstars, they think they must get ten wives in their lifetime. Divorce and marry and divorce and marry and divorce and marry and, and then tell the church you must accept that. No, that behavior is when you was a little child wetting your pampas. And didn't know how to control your bladder. Are you hearing me? And you didn't know how to control your bowels. Can I speak to you this morning? When you didn't know how to control your bladder. Or you didn't know how to control your bowels. People expect that you wet the bed. But if they check me in in Hyatt Hotel. A big man. Bishop Holder. Because when I sign in, I sign in my name. Bishop Holder. I sign in Hyatt. And the cleaners come in. And pee all over the bed. What? Who is the person in this room? That is the first thing the cleaners will talk about themselves. And then they start to investigate to find out who is the man. And they're making sure they come in at a certain time to see me. Before I leave the room. To put... The name and the face together. And then they will further investigate. One of them would have that friend who is on the reception team. What is his name? He's a pastor. And you just pee bed. Every morning we have to change, change the, this sheet. Because this nasty big man. Only pee in the bed. Well, I watch at it and think about it. And think about it. Think about it. I should have stopped that by the time I was seven, eight. Even if a few let out at nine. A little thing happened at ten. Maybe before your twelfth birthday, one happened again. <laughs> but at, at 40, at 40 every night I pee in my bed. No, you laugh at it, but, but that is the reality of how some people operate. When you was a child, you have certain things that you do as a child. When you become an adult, there are some things that you have to stop. Are you hearing me this morning? There are some things that you have to stop yourself with as an adult. And if you have a bladder problem, make up your mind to wake up several times in the night. Yeah? Somebody say yeah. yeah. But you can't expect that you, you turn adult and you're still wet in your bed. You can't expect that you turn an adult and still see a woman as a dolly. You can't expect that you turn a big man and still talking nonsense about my girlfriend. What girlfriend are you talking about? You're a big man. You need to get a wife. Big men have wives, not girlfriend. Girlfriend is for primary school. Adults get wife. And husband. This is my husband. This is not, this is not my significant other. That is children talk. Adult must operate with us as adult. Are you hearing me? There are some things that you must understand. You must understand purpose and move into it. You can't just keep on living and not understand what the word of God calls sin. What does he call sin? Fornication, adultery, immorality of all sorts. Things that men imagine in, the, in their mind. And uh, things that are not lawful. Things that are not, even animals don't do the things that men, some men think about in their mind. This is what the word of God calls sin. Disobedience and, and rebellion. And, and people don't even want to listen to, 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 to authority. They defile authority on all sides. This is what the word of God calls sin. And this is things that we need to mature out of. 
You can't continue in sin. You can't continue what's in your bed. Welcome back, friends, to Impact to Impart. Trust that you enjoyed the time of the Word of God today at our service. We want to remind you of a few things as we get ready to wrap up this broadcast. And indeed, we are looking for you to visit with us. An invitation awaits you at our church. Open arms of welcome await you at our church. And we want to invite you to come visit with us. Our services every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. We're located on Plymouth Road, the corner of Plymouth Road and Union Trace. And we're right on the corner, the building on the corner. And we are looking forward to you. Remember, we have a ministry for everyone. And the children, we have a program for you every Friday, Young Samuel Club from 445. The youth, we have a program for you, Change Your World Group. It begins um, at 6.30 p.m. And uh, ladies, pearls, priceless evidence appearing out of real life situation. Every month, you ladies, you meet and uh, invitation await you, women also. We have a program for the men, Men Talk, which comes up every Wednesday. Every second Wednesday in the month, you are invited, all the men. And we want to just let you know that we really want to just share the love of God with you. We want to help other people escape. We want to ask you to remember this summer holidays as we get ready to participate in some extra activity. Uh, we want to extend an invitation to all the children we have in our summer program, SBBCS, which is Summer Blast Bible Classes, SBBCS. You're going to be hearing more about that. It comes up in the month of August, the first week. Um, of August, the program takes place here at the church. It's a program that you parents can send your boys and girls out to come learn more about the Word of God. Our team this year is having fun in the sun, and we're looking forward to an excited week of explaining and expressing the wonderful grace of God. We want to just remind you also, over the summer holidays, we have or ladies and men, well, actually a couples program that's called Bliss Bringing Love in a social setting. And you're going to hear more about that as we continue our broadcast. But we want to just remind you most of all to let us stay connected to what God has given unto us, the Word of God today. Make that choice and let's do the work together, believers. Backsliders, you come back to Christ. And every sinner, you have a place in God. So I want to encourage you, come home, let's fellowship together, and let's all look for that soon and eminent return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is Bishop Holder saying, Shalom, we love you, God bless you, impact to impart. Amen. Impact to impart, we're sending no message coming straight from the heart. Impact to impart. We're giving all sinners a brand new start. Impact to impart. We're sending the message. Spreading the word. We're sending this message all over the globe.